Good evening and welcome back to Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes Weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition live stream campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running the campaign as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, and I will be playing Chud Hopkins, the stout halfling monster slayer ranger. And we are joined today by our good friends... Jill Denitis playing Rain Highlash, the uh, variant human blood hunter, Order of the Lycan. And Joe O'Gorman playing Sten Livingston, the human variant hunter, uh, immortal and bright eyed. <laughs> and thank you for joining us once again. If you are just tuning in for the very first time, these are the untold tales of Drakenheim. Due to the current global situation, our group cannot play together in person. The lockdowns are still in effect in, here in our part of the world, so we are playing together remotely for the very first time. We've never played Dungeons & Dragons together online on a consistent basis, nor have we done that while we were streaming. We're used to playing in person. So we put our main campaign, Shadows of Drakenheim, on hiatus, and we are exploring some side stories in the world of our main campaign uh, as an effort to get us some practice with playing and streaming online together, and also to give us an opportunity to uh, explore the many, many untouched locations in the city of Drakenheim from the point of view of the five factions of Drakenheim. So this is the turn for the Hooded Lanterns, the stalwart defenders and remnants of the old armies of Westmar and the City Watch of Drakenheim. And we are going far back in time because... This The events of this little series, which we're going to call First Light, happen seven years before the main campaign. So if you have never watched an episode of Dungeons of Drakenheim, you're going to get a very different perspective of the world of the campaign. And there's probably not going to be too many big spoilers here for you. A couple characters that were not inter introduced in the campaign for probably the first 10 episodes are going to make some cameos this evening. Uh, and we're going to go to some locations that were never explored in the campaign. But this is relatively probably going to be relatively spoiler free for those of you that have never watched uh, Dungeons of Drakenheim and are interested in a small taste of what the world of this dangerous and meteor blasted city is actually like so with that are we all ready to dive in i think so awesome before we we, we do so uh an awesome shout out uh, once again um we got this awesome initiative tracker from brothers forge that we're plan oh, playing around yeah. with uh and their kickstarter is only online for another week they've sponsored this video this episode and some episodes on our channel before so if you are interested in this awesome rod of initiative tracker check them out at brothersforge.ca they're on kickstarter uh right now and beyond that, um, while we are using Roll20 for our games, um, we have tried various platforms. We're not endorsing any particular platform. Uh, you should know for those of you that are following along, we are playing um, with our real physical dice. We're rolling real dice. We're not using a virtual die roller. We're tracking all of our character sheets and D&D Beyond and all that stuff. And as a full disclosure as well, the maps that you might see tonight were created by some really talented artists uh, who run their own Patreons at Two Minute Tabletop and Neutral Party. So a massive thank you to those amazing cartographers for the maps that we're using uh, this, this evening. Please check them out. Uh, they uh, Their Patreons are really, really awesome, and you get a ton of gorgeous maps to use, and that's where uh, these are all coming from that you're going to be seeing tonight. So nothing nothing made by me, homemade. Uh, all cool stuff that I source, source from uh, uh, these fantastic creators. So with that, shall we dive in? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, okay. So, so water. An assembled host marches grimly along the King's Road towards the city of Drakenheim. Green banners fluttering in the air, riding horsemen calling out the advanced vanguard as they scout forward, surround a group of nearly 500 soldiers. It has been a long and difficult march through the muddy road 
up from Geldstadt and further further up in Altbruck and beyond, assembled from the remnants of various armies that have lo- fought long and hard for the past several years. At the front of the assembled host, the Lord Commander, Elias Drexel, leads the newly reinaugurated Hooded Lanterns towards that cursed and lost city of Drakenheim. Amongst all of you, the beat of excitement. After years of war and suffering, finally, what were, well, once brother and sister fought against each other over the scraps of who would rule next. Now, finally, a few of you have united together to take back what was lost, to shine that light once again over the city of Drakenheim, to rise from the ashes and restore the great capital of Westmar. Off in the distance, as you crest the low hills, you can see it, that ruined and broken city. A thick mist hangs like moss over the city walls, crumbling and ruined. And you see there in the far off distance, a staggering sight. The looming spear tips of the parapets and towers of Castle Draken over the ash covered rooftops of the city of Drakenheim. A sight strikes you. The tower of the academy, it stands, but smashed through in the center, but still floating as if in defiance of gravity itself. In the far distance, the clock tower and the steeples of the great cathedral of St. Vitruvio can be seen high above the castle walls, the walls of the city, and the various rooftops of the city of Drakenheim. Clinging to the walls like fungus are a ramshackle sprawling of the outskirts of the city as the river, the Dran River, flows out from the gatehouse between the walls. Elias Drexel points over the hill. There, you see it! This is our home. Let's take it back. Make it ours. Destiny, our home, will be ours once again. Huzzah! Ah! There is a charge up from the assembled throng. Great uh, excitement rings out through the crowd. We make camp, says Elias Drexel. Here, prepare yourselves. In the next few days, we'll be setting out shortly to take back our city. As the great assembled host breaks, the column breaks apart and the first encampment is struck. Fires are lighted and a cooking fire begins. A great, a wonderful smell wafting across the camp. We come to a a group gathered round the fire pot as first we meet Joe. Please introduce your character. Sten Livingston is whittling uh, uh, a, a piece of wood he has found. He's uh, a quiet yet s- and somber man, um, uh, a natural leader, yet uh, refined in his choices. Uh, some might say overly curious uh, in his exploration of the world, uh, but that wouldn't be a fault for he is uh, very strong in the ways of combat, both uh, sword and bow. Uh, and he sits around the campfire, um, uh, kind of con- like concentrating on uh, on the whittling uh, every once in a while, looking up uh, and around the campfire. As you continue your whittling, um, a you see another figure 
um, assembling and, and adjusting their weaponry. Jill, tell us about your character. So Rain is kind of scoping around as she's, you know, sharpening her great sword after she's put up her tent and kind of scoping out the the people. And she goes up to Sten. Hey, who do you think is going to be the leader of our group? I know I mean, you. You would be a great leader. But I, nobody's told me anything yet. I, I, I look to Elias Drexel for for some kind of sign, but I know we will be trusted with a, a natural leader, someone of great strength and, and ferocious combat ability, uh, someone who can think on their feet, um, who isn't afraid to approach a situation with a bit of creativity, uh, a little headstrong. I know that uh, I, I trust him. Um, I know that the civil war is behind us. We, we only look to unify ourselves and uh, I fall into rank and I will accept the leader that he bestows on us. You're right. I only fight beside the, the strongest leaders, and I am ready to put my sword to the test to help bring the Lanterns back to the glory of protecting Drakenheim. I am ready. What do you think of the city? I've only seen it once when I was much younger, and I haven't been in years. It looks like it's enveloped in some kind of shadow. It's strange. It seems much more gloomy than I remember from being such a small child, but... I know we can restore it regardless of its state now. And, you know, the having the lanterns together just brings me hope that it'll be the, the strong place where my father once was on the, the, the lanterns too. So I hope to bring him some, some pride in what we're doing here today. As the two of you chat, Elias Drexel approaches you both, flanked by his lieutenants. Drexel... He's a large man with a braided beard and a grim expression on his face. He wears his half-plate armor in bl- uh, with the cloak of the hooded lanterns and his badge prominently clasp, holding his cloak in p- place. His, par- his, his weapons sheathed at his side, but always at the ready. Lowering his forehead, he speaks. Sten. Rain. You two were some fantastic soldiers. You fought. We might have fought on different sides in the wars the past, but we're one and together. I uh, wanted to get you acquainted with your strike team leader, but he is a bit busy right now. He's dedicated, passionate, not only to our mission and the cause, but to making sure that every single soldier in our ranks is well taken care of. You will be Truly. working with none other than Chud Hopkins. He? Chud Hopkins? I thought yeah. it was only rumors. It's at this moment that uh, <laughs> there's, there's the pot of soup nearby, and Chud is standing there. He's about three feet tall. Uh, his hair is an absolute disaster. He, um, he's carrying a wooden shield and has a little sword that's like strapped to his side, and he has a spoon, and he's trying to sit, and he goes, ooh, soup. And he goes to take a sip and he burns himself and drops all of his items and goes, oh, and then looks up at Elias Drexel as his name is called. Um, so, did Chud? Chud Hopkins? Yes, Chud Hopkins. You're made of the kind of metal that was meant to lead. Look at, here are all the other soldiers, all the others of the Hooded Lanterns that have no great stories told of their valor in battle. All of them are cleaning their weapons, are lazing about for the things to come, and here you are, a pillar of our organization, feeding your brothers and sisters in battle, feeding their bodies just as your valor will stoke their courage. You are the perfect one to lead our scouting party that will be going towards King's Gate at first dawn tomorrow. Uh, I was hired a few weeks ago as the new the new cook. Um, I can't believe it, Chud. We're we're just letting you sit here and work alone. I'm here whittling, and you're cooking. Look at you're covered in soup. Uh, let me get that for you. And I start to like pick up your stuff, and I start cleaning up. Uh, uh, think, Commander, I'm so sorry. Uh, we should be more attentive to your needs. It's, it's uh, no problem. No problem. Um, what, what was what was your what was your name? I am Sten. Sten. Um, Sten Livingston. 
Chud, Chud Hopkins, uh, you've, you've heard of me. Heard of you? Chud, your, your name is but a whisper on, uh, within the men, the ranks. They, they tell of your tales of, of heroic deeds. Who uh, hasn't heard of you yes. in these rankings? Rain, I, I heard just the other day that you, you killed a, a hobgoblin captain with, with merely your fists. Me? I heard it was his index finger, not just oh. his fist. Yes, so strong. I'm, I'm delighted to be. I, I would follow you into battle. I would die for you. I would now, learn so much from this mission from you. You will, but do not stroke the ego of such a valiant and brave warrior. Of course. Don't want to let that go to his head, do we, Chud? Uh, no. Um, so modest, not. Chud. No. So modest. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, a true warrior. True leader. Petra, get over here. He calls over uh, a, a a young woman, probably in her early teens, uh, still uh, too small to really uh, string her bow. And he says, you want to earn your keep? You can take over the bowl and the spoon, and maybe you'll learn the humility that a brave warrior like Chud has. It'll be a good lesson for you, Petra. You serve the rest of the soldiers while I brief these three on their mission. Uh, it needs a little salt, uh, in case you were wondering. It's a little, little, little bland right now. Petra, uh, Petra, who is a uh, uh, young woman, she she is still trying to fit into her armor and carry her bow and her arrows. She sets them down somewhat clumsily and goes and stares over at Chud and picks up the spoon and starts serving the bowls of soup to the other the others. And she says, "Yeah, yes, yeah, Dad. Oh, sorry." Sir, Lord Commander, sir. And she goes back to serving her, um, serving the, the others as the Lord Commander waves you over all to his tent. I grab my gear and run along. The Lord Commander brings you into his tent where 15 other hooded lanterns have, assemb- have been assembled. There is a large table over which several lanterns hang with a map of the city of Drakenheim is laid out with several markers and a dagger stabbed right in, scrawling out the location where that fell meteor struck the city only seven years ago. Elias Drexel slams his fist down on the map. All right, we're all here, spoken for. At first light tomorrow, we will strike out. You are amongst the talented, most talented, bravest, and competent of our forces. And it will be you who scout out the city for the rest of the war party. At first light, you will all set out. Chud, you will be the Kingsgate team. Me and, and me, Ansem, the others here, we will be the Shepherd's Gate team. Market's Gate team, Temple Gate team, Champions Gate team. Each of us will take our parties and examine one of the five gates outside the city of Drakenheim. Don't push yourself too hard. We have heard rumors of monsters and strange beasts in the haze. It's what they're calling the mists that hang over the city. It's like poison to breathe it in too long. It sits in the lungs. You can't get any sleep for the life of you. It leaves you static and strange. Don't linger in there too long. We've heard rumors of strange beasts and monsters stalking through the ruins of the city. So our mission is just a scouting one. Find out which of the gates are occupied by any beasts or resistance, or if any of them are open. Report back by the evening. That is all of our object- objectives for tomorrow. But few things to be aware of as you head into the city. It's entirely possible that the gates might be damaged or occupied by some beast or monster, or perhaps even squatters or scavengers of some kind. They may require force to extricate. Thus, Chud, you and your team, we've talked to some of the old, the, the old elders who used to live in the east side of the city seems like there might be several locations of interest along the way. The Chapel of St. Hildegard, the Penny Street stables and warehouses, 
and the Black Ivory Inn. I want you to check these places out, see if there might be supplies, or we might even be able to fortify one to use as a forward base for when we go for King's Gate. Is that clear? Are you sure I'm the right Chud? What do you mean? Are you... I'm, I'm the cook? Right? I'm... The cook, Chud. Chud Hopkins? <laughs> You're the cook. You're the leader. You're the great... Chud, are you not the Chud that uh, murdered a whole band of goblins um, uh, at, at, at Castle Hillbrook? Are you Where not the Tom Chud that, uh, an, Another voice rings out, Ansem says, Are you not the Chud that killed a hill giant with barely any weapons to, him, to himself? Uh, that, here, that, here. Was, that was, that was a, a, an accident. Uh, yes, I am. Kills a hill giant by accident? Modesty. All modesty. I think what uh, Chud is really asking is, is this mission not... It's, it's okay, Chud. This mission is not beneath you. Uh, we can do this. We will accomplish our goal and, uh, and we will come back victorious. We will uh, not let you down, either as oh. your, your uh, soldiers in command. We'll be here for whatever directions you give us. We will not Good. fail. Good. Chud. So Chud. I expect King's Gate as the closest to the castle itself. It was one of the most fortified gates of the city in, in its prime. And if anything has taken up residence there, it could be a terrible beast. One that is befitting of your incredible skills and valor. Nevertheless, save some for the rest of us. And don't get too <laughs> overconfident. I know you've uh, gotten your way out of some sticky situations in the past, but this is just a scouting mission, of course. Uh, but, right. of course, one of your skill should be able to bring back something of a kill. If you, we might need to study the monsters that live in the ruins these days. So, if you do manage to find yourself in a bit of a scrap, bring us a tale, literally. Uh, it was, uh, sounds good, sir. Um, yes. All right. Sten, we should see who brings back the most tales. Yes, we will uh, We will have a friendly competition. <laughs> now, it's so one final thing. The city has not been untouched. There have been so-called adventurers exploring the ruins, taking the rightful property of the citizens of Westmar and Drakenheim as their own. Nevertheless, these adventurers, mercenaries, scavengers, had provided us with useful information. If you should encounter any, and I have reason to believe that you might, find out what they know, but remind them, the Hooded Lanterns are here. It is our turn to be the heroes. These scavengers are looking for treasure and glory, and they may be quite confident, competent. Offer them to join us for the glory of Westamar, for the reclaiming of the capital. If you should encounter any of them, find out what they know. Offer them graciously to join us. Or at least to donate some of their ill-gotten gains to the restoration of the capital. Understood? Some of them have also given a told us of rumors of a strange crystal apparently might be pieces of the meteor that struck the city apparently this crystal has found some interested and motivated buyers be careful with it but if you find any of it bring it back maybe we might be able to do something with it at the very least supply us for another month Interesting. Well, whatever keeps us running and on our mission to bring back the city to once what it was. We will help fund the Hooded Lantern's uh, reclaiming of Drakenheim. Um, so, uh, yes, the cause is good. And uh, 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 yes, sir. Fantastic. You are dismissed. You may take, set out at first light. 
for your respective missions. May the light be with you for the glory of the Von Kessels, Westamar, and Drakenheim. Thanks, sir. As the head camp breaks the... <laughs> and you head back to your camps, Chud, what is going through your mind? Uh, Chud doesn't want to disappoint anybody, and uh, he's going to take this job on, but he has zero idea what's happening <laughs> and is really, really nervous. Yeah. Uh, are you guys, you guys, uh, you, you ever shot a, shot a bow before? <laughs> Always the kidder. Of course we've uh, shot a bow. That's basic training for for right. the, the lanterns, but really my specialty, and I hold up my great sword, is to use a sword. Right, so you, you're good with the sword. Uh, what about you, Stan? Um, what, what, what I like that? to uh, mix it up. Uh, I, I'm trained in all combat proficiencies. Uh, I look forward to fighting alongside you. My son will love to hear the tales uh, that I fought beside the great Chud. Good, good. Dad, um, I didn't know you had a, a son. Yes. Um, I write to him as often as I can. I hope one day he becomes a Hooded Lantern. I'm sure he will follow in his father's footsteps, just like I have followed in mine. Guys, I think this, uh, uh, it's going to be dangerous out there. Um, might be some, uh, th did they say monsters? Of course, monsters. Monsters. Who knows what kind of monsters? That's really the... The excitement of it all, isn't it? The hunt, seeing what's out there. You never know what you're going to come across. But I know, again, we have you, Chud. We can handle anything. I just hope I don't disappoint the great Chud and, and the amazing stories. I hope I can yeah, I'm have glad some I didn't more get stories Rick. after this. Or Guys, even Elias Drexel. I, 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 gotta, I don't know how much he flip-flops. Uh, he's flip-flopped during the Civil War between you and me. Um, you know, I, I follow him. He's my commander, but uh, Chud, you've only proven yourself uh, time and time again as a loyal companion and, I, I, and a competent I, leader. I got. I got to just like break the ice here. Um, the hobgoblin captain, he uh, he fell on my sword, and the giant. Um, yeah, that was that was that was wild. The giant, the giant situation. I, yes, I've had many creatures fall on my sword. The the best. Warriors use the momentum of their enemies coming towards them to slay them. A keen eye, Chud. Well done. As you while away the evening, <laughs> regaling tales of Chud's valor in battle and incredible victories over improbable enemies, you eventually bed down for the evening. The camp goes quiet with expectation. The banners of the hooded lanterns, the green banners with the symbol of a, of a lamp, with the glowing rays shooting outwards upon which a dragon is perched, fluttering beside the crest of the Von Kessels, the dragon perched atop a tower. As the first light begins to break the next day, the last dawning, twi the twilight of dawn, you suit up, don your cloaks, the green cloaks of the Hooded Lanterns, take up your armor and weapons, castle-forged, arm uh, and professionally made for your mission ahead, and you take your good old fourth-level selves to venture out into the ruins at the east side of Drakenheim. Any last preparations that you want? Uh, as you head out, Petra rides up to you one last time with a small bundle. She says, The Lord Commander wasn't certain if you'd need this, but he said uh, that someone with a great valor and skill as Chud probably wouldn't need these, but just in case. And it's a bundle with two healing potions for each of you inside. Thank you, Petra. Chud, this will go well. I will need this. You're such a hero and an inspiration. I, I, I just wanted to say that I, I heard about how you, you t 
totally bullseyed those bandits. It, it, it was amazing. Will you will you show me how to shoot a bow like that? Uh, yeah, I think uh, you just point it in the general direction and, and let go of the arrow and, and hope for the best. Wow. So you just do it so intuitively. It's just like you've internalized. You're a killing machine. That's amazing. And she skips uh, off. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, guys, I got my sword, my bow. I've got uh, got the shield. Uh, I think I'm good. And we have Chud, our burly protector. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. But we will Thanks, also then. watch your back as well. Me and, me and Sten together, I think, should be enough to, to cover just your back, but just enough. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I we could use see. it. I always need somebody to watch my back. I, I can't watch it myself, you know? <laughs> 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 okay so we now return to the city of drakenheim and with our characters all set up here is the map of drakenheim so so classic so classic, so classic indeed and so you will be venturing into the uh the east side of the city along the King's Road here and making for the cliffs where um, the ultimately the King's Gate is located along the way and through the King's Road are the Black Ivory Inn, the Penny Street Stables and Warehouse and the um, and the Chapel of St. Hildegard. You've been charged with potentially, you can explore as many of these locations as you have time for, gathering whatever intel and information that you, you can and returning by the end of the night. That is your mission. What will you do? Well, Chud, um, uh, we have an overlook uh, point, and I start looking on the map here and here. Um, we will need to break through the, f the, the first gate. Uh, if we can sneak up, we can take it by surprise. Um, we move into the city uh, under the cover of darkness uh, as as early as we can, while while we can catch things off guard, um, and we'll, we can explore the very uh, closest uh, of our rally points. What do you say? Uh, I mean, that sounds like a well thought out plan, uh, Sten. Uh, I don't see I don't see why we wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. The closest location first, and uh, uh, cover of night. Um, Checks out. Checks out. We have to make sure though we don't we don't get caught in the darkness because well I don't think very many of us can see well in the dark. Plus, monsters, if anything, are not going to come out just in the daytime. Also, also valid valid points. Uh, darkness might be a problem. So what do you Chud, think? What do you Chud? think is the best? Yeah, what do you think, Chud? Oh, um, Sten, what do you what do you think about those points? <laughs> well, I. I actually think we should try to use as much of the darkness as we can. I, I agree we might be uh, a little blindsided, but uh, at least we can uh, veil our, our movement into the city. Uh, is it going to be really dark at night? Or uh, like how dark, how dark are we talking? Probably extremely dark. We won't be able to see it all. And I bet you some of those you know, monsters have vision that they can see in the dark. We'll be totally ambushed if that happens. I, I've got it. I've got it. We'll, we'll go near dusk half of the journey will be in the light the other half will be in the dark huh? but wait we have to return by nightfall yeah you guys have set oh, out at, at first light as you approach towards the city the wind picks up into a howl blustering through the city streets like a keening banshee a wail that overpowers your ears and rushes across your nostrils and your face, sending your, ha your, your hair and cloaks whipping in the wind like a lash. The haze is whipped up and, and sending this stream of swirling fog and mist across the city, the city streets, as if endlessly pouring out uh, from a smoldering flame. Overhead, the clouds writhe, blotting out the sun, 
as a light rain falls down from above with a pitter patter. And as the rain, as the wind picks up, it's like the rain hits your face and a splatter of little daggers across you as you walk towards the city. It is miserable. And sometimes it gets in your eyes and just it stings a little bit actually when it does. You approach down the King's Road towards the east ward of the city. In the prime of Drakenheim, this was a wealthy district, home to many wealthy merchants, manor houses, grand tenement buildings, the homes of prominent craftspeople, clergy, city clerks, and others who attended the administrative needs of the city, but weren't necessarily nobility themselves. It is a fine district that is that was once considered a gateway into the more prominent areas of the old city and the road by which the king and the royal family would often take back into the city itself. The streets thus befitting the approach of a king and queen, the cities here are lined with statues and the outskirts of the city have built a great monument, a triumphal arch marking the grand victory of the von Kessels over the last dynasty almost a hundred years ago. As you pass through this triumphal arch, the, the city rises up around you. The, what once were proud buildings, now ramshackle and crumbling, bits of even masonry and even here and there roof tiles swept off uh, by, the, by, the, uh, by the, the winds. As you pass by the triumphal arch, you see a strange sight before you. There is a wagon with two dead horses, several splayed corpses out around it. The corpses look fresh. They're not skeletal. They look like adventurers. As you walked closer, you might need to walk a little bit closer to determine this, but you head closer in and you see they are not garbed in armor or weapons of any kind. They're garbed in the clothes of a fine merchant. In fact, some nice silks. Men, two men, a few women, even some children. The horses, all of them have been thrown about as if some impact sent them scattering and, they, and many of them have expired from wounds that they struck their heads or some, or, 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 or perhaps uh, some of them have bits of, uh, look like they were struck by bits of flying uh, wood or rock that crumbled down from above the arch and struck them. But that kind of impact would have happened years ago. These corpses look fresh, like they died this morning. Maybe there's uh, monsters nearby. Uh, I'm going to take a look and try to figure out if there's any uh, tracks leading away from them or signs of a skirmish. Did you look up, give me an investigation check. Uh, ooh, a seven. You can see signs that several of the bodies have been dragged away. And looking over a few of them, there are some strange bite marks on one of them. And the it looks like the horse, its guts were ripped open. But whether that happened, but the way that the, the entrails are splayed about, it doesn't look like this was the wound that killed it. Chud, these, these corpses are mysterious. I... Just looking at them, I have a feeling that something happened to them recently. Yeah, um, I, I'm a cook, not a doctor, but um, I, I think they're dead. <laughs> I go up um, and I check the pulse to make sure. You're right. Such keen observations. Uh, it looks like... Um, the bodies are stone cold. Uh, looks like they died here. Um how long ago? This doesn't make uh, sense. What merchants would be around here and 
I'm sure this damage was not from recently. They would be mad to come here. I've got it. They died a, a while ago. Mm -hmm. But why aren't they decayed and skeletal? Things don't um, add up. I'm. We should be on our guard. Magic? You're onto something, Chud. Oh, thank God. Maybe this place is more magical than when we were here last. Maybe what the commander said about this haze, this mist. It's something to do with these crystals. And I mean, even the mage towers, it's a uh, sight to behold. Mage towers don't usually, uh, uh, well, I don't know. I've never actually been in a mage tower, but all the ones I've seen were intact. So this one's unique. It's a correct train of thought. Uh, yeah. Student observation. Thank you. I'm doing my best. As you head past the grim scene, what will be your next destination? Will you make straight for the King's Gate? Or will you check out one of the other locations or perhaps scout through the streets themselves? Uh, what location is closest to us marching up King's Road? Uh, heading up King's Road itself, um, the Black Ivory Inn and the stables are right on King's Road. Um, although the stables are on Penny Street, so they're a little bit off to the north, and the chapel is to the is to the south of the of the main road. Um, the the di all three locations are relatively close, which is why they've been ch relatively close to the middle of the area. So they're like a halfway point between the the city itself, the the edge of the city, and the gate. So that's why they were identified as primary possible like great places that could be forward bases because they're all about halfway halfway in. So I'm like flipping the map around in my hands, and I'm like, um. I think the uh, the the inn is 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 closest. It's just up the street here. Um, we could, you know, scout it out. I'll move ahead and see if I can clear the way. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Okay. As you head, how are you going to head along the streets? Say I mean we. Be cautious. Yeah. We don't know what's causing these strange deaths and and what else could be lurking around these buildings. Should we move quickly, Chud, or should we uh, keep to the sides and move stealthily? Well, I mean, I'm I'm pretty slow either way. Um, so I I'm not I'm not very good at sneaking. But I mean, if we stay to the the side of the road, we're less likely to be seen than in the middle of the road. So, so you move uh, with purpose. I understand. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Um, so I say we, 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 we go, you know, at a good pace, okay. average. <laughs> Making a good pace along the city streets. I would like you all to roll me a d6. Done this in a while. Two. One. Five. Okay. <laughs> You're head, heading Judge. forward. And... With this, you can each roll me a perception check. Oh, 18. You got a five. <laughs> okay, Chud, you do not see this at all. No, I don't. I never do. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> okay. So. As you head down the King's Road, deeper and deeper into the city, you pass by broken down and ramshackle buildings, crumbling ruins, and sights of chaos and dismay, overturned carts, and signs of, and in here and there, sight, sights of death and struggle. There will be a partially dismembered body here and there. Bits of fur, broken weapons, very little evidence of that tells exactly what might have happened before. You are moving down the streets, and I will bring your tokens over. 
Here we go. Oh, good. So, as you move down the streets, uh, you moving along the sides of the buildings through the ruins. My long Sten, bio. you catch sight of it first. Leaping up out of a well down the street here comes a humanoid figure. It is taller than Chud. <laughs> <laughs> like and everything. as it slinks up from the well, it you see its spindly limbs ending in furry claw-like hands and a long rat-like tail swinging on its back. It has a ra the head of a rat, but it's the size of almost a man. It's wearing ramshackle bits of armor and it carries a sword in one hand, a crossbow slung at its side. It looks at you and regards you with these beady, purplish eyes and shrieks. <laughs> <coughs> that what, the, what the hell is that? What is that? <laughs> and as it does so, it dives back into the well. Spread out. Chud. Where Chud, do we what do we do? Chud jumps behind a wall. <laughs> Good. We take cover. Take cover. I go into this building. <laughs> <laughs> I poke out. What? Is it gone? <laughs> Is it, did it leave? Actually, I'll get behind this this thing. Okay. In the middle. Stan, is it still there? You hear a chittering noise. Stan, oh, a rat runs by your feet. It looks up at you and gets back on its hind legs and looks you right in the eyes and run ba runs back into the building that you stumbled out of. Um, Guys, I yeah. know intelligent rats when I see them. What is going on here? That was a rat? It looked like a man. Or I feel like something is watching yeah. us. Oh boy. Uh, what do we do? Should we hunt it before it hunts us? Or should we try to get away? Chud, what do you think? Uh, if, uh, if, I mean, if these are rats, they must be just simple creatures. They have little to no form of communication. Uh, I can't see them being much of a threat. Do, do we look in the well? Do one of you two look in the well? Are you, are you asking me to look in the well? Are you ordering me to look in the well, Chud? I, 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 yes. Yes, I am. Right away. Uh -huh. and I, <laughs> Stan, do you need backup? <laughs> Cover me, Rain. And uh, I'm going to pull out my, my, my two swords and slowly approach the, the well. Okay. I'm kind of from the side backing you up. And, and I'm, I, I'm trying to sneak up on it. All righty. Be careful. As you inch towards the well, you hear a squeak. And then, coming from the south building over here, and then the tumbling down of a shingle from the rooftop over here. And as you look up, you can see on the rooftop preparing a crossbow oh. are three more of these awful half human half rat looking creatures you guys are sitting by the river there <laughs> roll for initiative ah! oh no <laughs> And what I will do is I will have each of you make me one more perception check to see if you're caught by surprise. 13. Uh, 17. Okay. Perception. Six. For perception. Uh, so, Chud, you are surprised. 
<laughs> now my initiative isn't great. I only got a five for initiative. I got a twenty-three for I got initiative. Twenty. 20. Surprised but quick on the draw. Uh-huh. Chud is very surprised. He he does okay. not. Okay, so know Chud, what did you get? Twenty-three. And Sten? Uh, five. And Rain? Twenty. Okay. All right. With that, Rain, coming to sudden awareness, you see that there are several more creatures now striking out from the ruins around you. In the building to the south, behind this low broken wall, there are two more, and an assembling swarm of hundreds of rats gathering together in the building. On the rooftop are two more, their crossbows trained. Uh, so you can see that there are se- there are, there are quite a few creatures gathered around, surrounding and in ambush. They brandish crossbows, crude spears, and javelins. What will you do? For me? Uh, okay, so I am going to rush over to the this is on the ground right that's correct okay good i rush over uh to this rat and as i'm rushing over i say well if you can't beat them join them and i uh use my hybrid transformation (laughs) um let me just i gotta change it in the edit character give me two seconds um and I essentially turn into using my lichen order. It's not a lichen like a wolf, though. It's actually like a rat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a were rat that comes out, and I say, "Sorry, guys, I didn't oh. tell you about this before." <laughs> oh um, my god, Stan, she's one of them. <laughs> what do we do, Chad? I'm not one of them. I'm, I'm I'm here to fight things like them. Don't worry. <laughs> um. So. I do my hybrid. <laughs> Please don't shoot me. Are you ordering me to shoot her, Chud? Don't oh, don't shoot. don't shoot her. Um, and I You're take really my clear. great sword, uh, and I'm going to use great weapon master, and I'm going to take a swipe at this rat. Nice. Ooh, uh, nineteen to hit. They'll cowering over the. Uh, the low wall here, this small creature shrieks as you bring your greatsword down upon it. Uh, 24 damage. What happens to it? I, so the way I swing my sword, because I'm like, I'm not the biggest body, but I essentially like swing it like a helicopter. Like, so it just chops it right in half. So oh man. Cool. Uh, yeah, you bisect it uh laterally yeah that's across the middle i think yeah is that horizontally you bisect it horizontally and the the bottom half tries to scurry away as the top half falls down and i say in a kind of a squeaky voice now because i can still talk and like who is next Nice. Uh, you, uh, you know that when you kill an enemy with Great Weapon Master, you get to make an extra attack as a bonus action. As a bonus action. action, but I used my uh, uh, I see. Okay. change for my bonus. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Alrighty. The ratlings shrieking out at the death of the first one go, and the uh, And let loose with a barrage of crossbow bolts. First, oh. one ratling leaps up out from the sewers at towards you sten ah um and as he uh. as he does so he leaps out with a dagger in his hand ah! and he brings it down towards your head getting a 20 to hit hit sten look out it's going to deal five points of damage as he stabs you in the shoulder ah. and the weight of the rattling he whirls you around uh as the three rattlings on the rooftop lower their cro- their their crossbows one of them is holding the crossbow with its tail and it fires it using its tail <laughs> ah! and they fire their shots at you getting a 19 a 17 and a 10 to hit uh the 19 oh my, hits my transformation for hits. another eight points of damage as the tail oh, shot strikes gosh. you 
a massive swarm of rats leaps out from the ruins and bears towards <laughs> Chud. <laughs> Uh, trying to engulf Chud in a swarm of teeth, getting a 20 to hit, Chud. That, that, that hits. That's going to be 12 points of piercing damage as the rats start swarming over top of your small form, biting you in every possible place where they can find exposed flesh. The final rattling leaps forward. Uh, it kind of hops over the, the ruins and reaches to stab at you, Rain, getting a 14 to hit. Doesn't hit. And the others from the rooftops launch a barrage of bolts towards you too. Getting a 12 and a 7 to hit. No, my beastly hide, my resilient hide prevents it from happening. With that, Sten, it is your turn. Um, b- being pelted and, and, and shot with these crossbow bolts. Um... Uh, I I I look to this thing with the dagger in my back, and I'm gonna swing my long sword at it um, to try to cleave it in half. Uh, What's our plan, Chud? <laughs> <laughs> and I get a 21 to hit. That is a hit for uh, seven damage. You. Stab into the creature and it lets out a horrifying shriek as fear comes over its rat like fa- like face and uh, slobber and and spittle spray across you in a spray of blood, but it still stands. Okay, uh, I'm gonna use my uh, bonus action to take another swipe, um, but I only get a, an eight. That is a miss, I'm afraid. Um, and then uh, uh, I. The creature I leaps to, past and swipe and leaps away from the swipe, and and I, I'm gonna stand uh, fast with it. Okay, Chud, it is your turn. Uh, Chud, screaming in a mound of rats, gets to his feet and yells, "I'm gonna try to kill these rats!" And I target them as my slayer's prey, and. I yell, helicopter attack, and I just start uh, spinning with my little tiny short sword with my (laughs) eyes closed, uh, trying my best uh, to to do something. So that's going to be 21 to hit. It's a hit. All right. And so with my Slayer's Prey, it's going to be an additional D6. So that's going to do 11 damage. Okay, so as you spin around in a circle, your sword doesn't actually stab any of them, but you step on a bunch of them instead. (laughs) Yes, so I'm just spinning in a circle, stomping on rats, and I do 11 damage, and then I get dizzy and kind of fall back into the pile of rats, and they start jumping on And uh, Sten and Rain, you you see the flying rats that he kicks away in like a whirlwind of death. In the in the midst. Wow. <laughs> in I feel he does that move better than I do. <laughs> I saw you do it. I thought it looked good. Anything Such else, skill? Chad? Um, I, I seem like I'm in it now. So they're they're my Slayer's prey. That was my bonus action. I I'm gonna stay put uh, and continue screaming and swinging. Rain, it is your turn. All right, with this rat thing in front of me, I take another swipe. Um, just going forward, going to use Great Weapon Master. Um, oh, three. <laughs> you bring down your weapon and it slams into the dirt, but no rattling at all. Okay. Uh, and then instead, um, I'm going to use my bonus action to... Is, so is the, the all the rats considered one thing or is it separate things uh the rats that are attacking chud yeah it's a swarm of like a hundred rats okay i don't know i don't know if i can use that on it um counts as one target counts as one target yeah it is one target though okay then i'm going to as my bonus action use my blood curse of binding on this swarm of rats um Make a strength saving throw. 
Uh, I get a 13. Oh, you beat it. Nope. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's why I tried. I'm like, stop, rats. And they keep going. I'm like, oh, it's, uh. and then um, using mobile, because I tried to swing at this rat in front of me, I'm going to take some movement back uh, towards the side step. Okay. Yep. <laughs> um, the ratlings pushing their advantage and crying out ah! you hear them chittering and ch- chittering to each other and you, and you he- hear them say kill kill the badlings yes 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 oh no <laughs> they talk tasty they fresh and another one says yes yes tasty fresh f- flesh tasty fresh flesh <laughs> uh, and they know rhymes <laughs> Um, and the, this, this rattling here screams out, pulling back his, his, uh, its dagger and it rushes towards you, Rain, getting a 15 to hit. No. You slide out out of the way as two of the other rattlings from, from the rooftop fire down their shots at, at you with their crossbows, getting a 18 and a 21. Yes. Those hit. Yes, yes! But die, 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 die! They cry Piercing, out. slashing, or bludgeoning damage? It is piercing. All right, I'm resistant to this. Uh, so that is, uh, before the resistance applies, that would be 10 piercing damage. So be, go go down to 15. Or go down to 5. I'm so strong and I'm transformed! Freaking hell on your rattling! <laughs> Um, though, though wounded, the, this rattling here, Sten, presses it, it, its fight and tries to stab you in the belly. Ah! Getting a 15 to hit. I, I, I bear, I narrowly dodge as we're engaged in some kind of, like, rat-man combat. And the other rats fire towards you from the rooftop. Ah! Getting a 15, uh, sorry, a 17, a 4... And an eighteen to hit. Uh, they all miss. And oh! so in my in my dance and dodge and and I and I actually I, I I I'm able to like parry one of the the bolts with my sword. One of the rats says, says to the other, "Tinkly little bolts aren't going to get through. We have to stab, stab, stab." <laughs> <laughs> they talk. They speak in 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 tongues, and they speak the common tongue. We must. What do we do, Chud? If they talk, kill them. <laughs> and Chud, uh, I get a 21 to hit you as the swarm of rats continues to devour you. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, for 12 more points of damage. As the armor isn't doing anything. <laughs> I, like, put up my shield and they just crawl up my leg and start <laughs> fighting me. Sten, it is your turn. Uh, I continue my, uh, uh, my assault on the the rat uh 23 to hit that's a hit for um ooh, five damage okay he's still standing but oh barely my god uh I, I i use my bonus action uh uh 12 to hit uh that is a hit oh thank god <laughs> for okay um 11 damage what happens to him okay so i i i get another cut on his belly it barely it barely connects, and as he tries to, as he's stepping out of the way of it, I catch him off guard and I decapitate him. Um, the uh, as the others, uh, the other rattlings gasp out, "Oh no!" And uh, I'm going to, um, and then one of the other rattlings yells from the rooftops, "It not matter, he die. More food for the rest of us. Yes, 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 yes." And I'm gonna. Uh, Get right up to uh, this other rat here with uh, rain. All right, Chud, it's your turn. Um, I, I I get to my feet again and I yell, "I'm going to try again to kill these guys," and I'm going to cast um, Hunter's Mark on them. And so now they have Hunter's Mark and Slayer's Prey, and I just start jumping up and down, stabbing the sword into the ground around me. Nice. True hero. Getting a 23. So that's going to be 3d6 damage. Uh, 
Uh, 16 more damage. Nice. The, Amazing. You kick and stab and squish the rats um, and, and uh, stomping them in into the, the dirt. Uh, finding the deliberateness of your attack uh, and uh, Sten and Rain see the deliberate savagery in your attacks as you uh, as you crush your enemies underfoot. At one point during that, I trip and I fall forward and I put my shield out to catch me and just squish a bunch of them and stand up and they're all stuck to my shield and I'm like shaking them off. He lives up to his name. He's taking on a hundred of them, but I can barely handle one. I know, <laughs> me too. Rain, it is your turn. All right, I'm gonna take another. And I, I attempt, I see him like, um, uh, try to like stab and I'm like, I should try that. But with my great sword, it's like, I feel like jump up in the air to try to stab him. Uh, so I take a stab at this rat and that's, uh, 18 to hit? A hit. Okay. I got a one on there, but with my great weapon fighting style, I can re-roll the ones on damage of melee attack. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, 23. Uh, you, you open this rat like a can opener. What happens? You are him. Um, and then as my bonus action, because I murdered him yep i'm gonna take um 30 feet of my movement oh and i'm you. gonna you have learned the ways over. of chud i say chud help you don't need help but i will try to have your back on this and i take another swing can i can i apply great weapon master this one too yep Ooh, okay 18 to hit Yep, the sword blow cleaves oh. through the swarm of rats. Just want to make sure I got two ones on my dice, so I think I can re-roll yep, them. Yep, you re-roll both. Roll both. Yep. Okay. Sweet. Okay. Um. So twenty damage. Twenty damage. <laughs> oh yeah. Um. You cut a bloody swath, skewering the, the swarming rats, but they still continue relentlessly. Uh, although they might be starting to disperse. And then because, how, how far did I move? About 20, 25, 30 uh, feet? You move 30 feet. Okay. And using mobile, I back up 10 feet. Okay. The rats. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> One of the rats, uh, seeing so many of, of their, their fellows go down, you hear one of the, the ratlings on the rooftop uh, say, um, say to the other he steps forward and pushes the other one get down there you help us aim yes 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 you distract them and he and he pushes this other rattling off the rooftop who he stumbles down and stumbles towards rain and the and this gives them their pack tactics and they shoot rain getting a 19 yes and a 19 to hit yes that hits yes 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 and they threw skew, my rat like they hide. skewer rain for 12 points of damage, six damage on each attack. Okay, total 12 though, right? Yep, total 12, okay. yep. And the other two rats uh, are gonna take advantage of it too. And they're gonna fire getting a 20 to hit mm -hmm. and an 11 to hit. So one more shot not. for one more seven shot. more points of piercing damage. So three, three. And the rat swarm is gonna try to devour Chud, uh, getting only a five to hit. I, I put up my shield as they jump and they like bounce off of it. And it's just luck. Like I'm cowering behind my shield and they bounce off. Stan, you're up. Um, I'm going to do uh, seeing the effectiveness of of rain following Chud's tactics. I do. I move into helicopter attack. <laughs> and uh, I if I if I sit here, can I can I like. I want to try to helicopter and just like spin with my two swords as I run by rain to try to catch both. Uh, uh, first, I want to hit this rattling that's right beside her. Him. Uh, getting a uh, 13 to hit. A hit. A palpable hit. Uh, for uh, seven damage. You stab into the, the, the brutish creature and it shrieks. No, no want to come down here they made me do it they made me ah! sometimes we have to do what we must do and or something else cool and then i stab him again 
uh, getting a, a a seventeen to hit. Yes, for uh, ten damage. And how do you finish him off? So uh, the helicopter attack is a, a, a extremely effective. Uh, Chud, this is working, and I <laughs> I do like a full swing, and I do like a full three sixty rotation, and just like wham, wham, and just like. Uh, uh, finish it off um, with two quick blows, like one in the chest and then one in the side of the head, and it just caves in. <laughs> Chud, it is your turn. Uh, Chud grabs his sword in his hand and begins rolling around on the ground <laughs> uh, in an attempt to get the rats off of him, uh, getting a 17 to hit. <laughs> And in the process, you squish the remaining rats as you roll yeah. around on the ground. Oh, man. I just I imagine that like, you, you put your hands over your head in the fetal position. Yeah, and I do 21 damage, so I just roll them all off of me. <laughs> Whimpering. Oh, and then with them dead, I run uh, into this building and hide. <laughs> Screaming. I, you see all the Chud, you see more, guy, and I stand up and I go, ah, and I like jump into the building. Rain, he must be off finding more rats to kill. Rain, it's your turn. We must clean these ones up. Uh, they're all on the roofs, right? Correct. <laughs> okay. Um... Are there any stairs? <laughs> To get up to the roof, um, there to get up to the roof. No, you might be able to climb up the walls though, because they're rough masonry. Uh, so with an athletics check, you could probably climb up at half speed. Okay. Um, let me just quickly check how far I am. Yeah. So the the roof is about fifteen feet up. So you'd need to dash to get up it mm. in one round. He has movement of forty. 40 feet. 40. Okay. 40 feet. Yeah. Um, you know what? I'm going to dash just to get up in their faces. Um, movement. There we go. Okay. So this is 25, and then to go up, it's 15, right? Yep. Give me an athletics check. Oh, and I have advantage on that. Uh, 16. Okay, roll me a d6. Six. Okay, you clamor up on, on the rooftop, and as you do so, uh, the part of the roof starts to cr clamor and crack, and uh, the hole starts to expand on, uh, with the additional weight on the rooftop. And in fact, what happens is the um, your, you added the weight to the roof, but you're still in a strong point on the rooftop. So what happens is the hole here in the roof opens a little bit more and the two rattlings both fall prone <laughs> as the roof creaks uh, under under the whole thing. But you manage to keep your footing. I just got up here and then they're gone. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, they're still here. They just tripped. Like it, oh. imagine like you get up on top of the roof and the weight of like it's a rickety creaky roof. So you getting okay. up on the top of it shakes yeah. the whole thing oh, and okay. you kept your footing, but the rattling stumbled because of Oh, I thought it, they it, fell through the hole. Okay. No. Good. <laughs> yes. Okay. The rattlings. Seeing this this first rattling uh gets back to his feet and he says, No, 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 don't want to die, don't to die and he he gets a, it stands up uh from from prone uh and begins dashing away get back here <laughs> so it has to give up half of its first movement so it starts dashing and leaps down the other stands up uh and it is going to disengage and leap down to the bottom uh landing safely on on the ground and starting to try to make it make its escape i need these tails and these other two rattlings down over here they run off into the the street dashing away as they they do so and we go to sten 
Um, seeing the one down the alley, uh, I can't quite catch it, so I'm going to drop my long swords and pull out my longbow and try to catch it with a with a shot um, from close range. Nice. And try to and try to wound it, uh, getting a uh, sixteen to hit. It's a hit uh, for eight damage. You strike it in the back and it stumbles, uh, but continues to run away. It's this way, Rain. Chud, you're up. Uh, Chud, seeing Rain on the roof, runs out over here and startled uh, by Sten running by. Uh, So as I'm running, I put my sword and shield away and I pull out my bow. And as I run out, I go, ah! And I just let out a very quick shot at the, uh, the rat there. Uh, I'm also going to move my hunter's mark to it. Okay. Um, getting a 12 to hit. It's a hit. All right. Uh, so what happens is as I run out, I shoot at Sten because he runs by and scares me, but it misses and bounces off the wall and ricochets and hits the rat. Right between the eyes. Uh, doing... Uh, 10 damage. And killing it. <laughs> Expert marksmanship, Chud. How did you How did you shoot past me? Oh, you're not a rat. <laughs> Rain, it is what, your turn. <laughs> All right. Um, I just want to see. Do, do, do. Um... If I dash, can I land on it? Um, you probably don't need to dash to get that far. You you just need to jump because you need to get your speed's forty feet, right? Yeah, you can get to that square. I can get there. I'll just need an athletics check as you run across the roof and jump. Yes, athletics check. Here we come. I go for it, like I'm making like wear rat sounds. <laughs> yeah, d- almost getting down on all fours as you race across. Uh. 14. Awesome. You keep your footing uh, as you clamber along the roof. Uh, and then I imagine like in midair, you take out your greatsword. And I'm going to give you advantage on your attack roll as you attack this one. Yes. Uh... 14. It's a hit. Oh, I got a one and oh, 24 damage. You do... Just clambering across the roof, pulling out the greatsword in this like spinning cut that just cuts it right in half and leaving a bloody mess on the ground below. <sighs> With that, the, uh, the other surviving rattlings managed to, to beat the high trail and escape. Uh, you have defeated the enemies present. A quiet settles back over the street. What will you do? I come to this corner and say, Guys, I made it look like a rat, but I'm not a rat. Okay. I instantly fire a shot that like just sticks in the wall, like three feet away from me, and then I put my bow down. Chad, I know your strong monster slaying instincts are here, but I need I need you not to shoot me. This is just. I'm sorry, you just startled me there. That uh, I I'm glad I missed. What are you? I. <sighs> I'm like a super soldier. This this happened to me. I took these oath of the lichen to give me extra powers in the war. And well, I thought it would be useful to help the lanterns take back the city using my own curse to help this cursed city. And well, it gives me pretty tough skin and, and some pretty good uh, hits. So as much as I look a little freakish, it's going to help us along the way, I swear. I, I would like to say that I am concerned. <laughs> if that's if that's you in there, Rain, I I I trust you. Uh, so this seems like a, a lot just happened. Should we head back? Should should we go tell Elias Drexel that there's rats in the city? We'll collect their tails, but we head back before nightfall. We have to finish. Yeah, it's like a. I don't know, like 10 a.m.? That's close yeah, to Yeah, you're right. We should head back to the inn uh, and recuperate there at the first meeting at the first meeting spot. Can, does anybody have bandages? 
I we do have those need potions to. of uh, from uh, Petra. Yeah. And, um, and Chad, I'm sure this isn't your first mission where you've had to pat yourself up in the middle and keep going just to get the job done. There's a lot of rat bites. There's there's a lot. But yeah, uh, I can I can keep going. I'm gonna start collecting tails, checking out the the makeshift crossbows and daggers that they've come up with. This yeah. Is, uh, fascinating. Piecemeal armor that they created. These creatures are as if a rat had grown to monstrous proportions and started walking on its hind leg. They're wearing armor clad together of bits of what might be skin. Actual, uh, uh, bits of whatever boiled leather they found and rusty knives built from sh- uh, scrap metal and lashed together with bits of cord that they've turned into makeshift daggers and scimitars and other weapons and fashioned crude crossbows uh, with bolts uh, with, and that were firing bolts a little more than rusty nails at you. Um, it's remarkable that these contraptions worked, but wow, did they hurt when they did. Do you guys want me to just drink my potions, or can we uh, sit down for for a little bit? Well, you're the commander of this mission. If you think that we can spend the time, I mean, we got this part done fairly early in our mission. I can Which find somewhere for us to uh, hide out, maybe in one of these ruined buildings. Uh, I worry though that the rats will rally again and and, and return. Get away. Maybe it's smartest to leave the vicinity. Good thinking, and Jed. Maybe head towards the stable instead? Or we didn't even get to... No, the inn's still down there. Why the don't inn. we head towards the inn and like we'll, we'll rest a little bit outside of it just to make sure that uh, I can clean up these uh, these bites. I might have rabies. Should I be <laughs> concerned about uh, rabies? It is no. uh, a common ailment among the... Uh, 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 what do you call it? Rodent none population. Of them, none of them were foaming at the mouth. So you're okay. Nobody wanted to send a cleric with us, eh? Nope. As you gather yourselves together, gather your bearings, patch yourselves up, and continue down the street towards the Black Ivory Inn, you hear above the the whipping wind as if carried on it itself. The sound, it's a piano playing a melodious ballad it's like the sound of a dream on the air long elegant chords speaking of a of lost love of wasting away time of echoes of the past and along with it as if maybe it's the wind maybe it's something there's a woman's voice carrying out an operatic it's it's a like a when uh, in that part of an opera where they just go the whoa, uh, singing out through the through the air, it's beautiful and haunting. And as you get closer, the sound rises coming from the inn. For as you turn the corner and come to the square, the Black Ivory Inn is bustling with light, sound, and music. That's where we'll take our break. Oh, hey. Whoa. Crazy people in the city. All righty. Well, what? let's uh, uh, take 15 and come back in a little bit and find out what's at the Black Ivory Inn. All right. We'll see you all in, uh, in, at uh, quarter two. And we are back from our short rest. We are recaffeinated, refed, and ready to roll some more dice. But before we do that, Jill, do we have anything? Yes, of course. Don't forget to take a look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes t-shirts, including classics from uh, the first Shocking Nine campaign, like Yes, 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 you know, throwback to the Ratlings uh, and Rat Prince, and Troll Killer, which could also be said for a uh, chud. <laughs> chud. <laughs> giant chud. killer. I'm a giant killer. Nice. Oh, sorry. We we'll have to make a new one for giant killer. <laughs> or you can find some of the new ones from Shadows of Dragonheim. Check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. 
Uh, if you are enjoying the stream and you want to help support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can find out how by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. We also have a phenomenal Discord community that is exclusive for our patrons. So please join us on Discord. You get to chat with us about the latest Drakenheim episode or the campaign in general. There's even a behind the screen chat where you can chat with Monty about secrets that the players like us don't mm. know. And you can just chat with us about anything you want. So if you're looking to get in touch with us, and kind of riff with us about cool D D stuff our discord is the way to do it so join our patreon and we'll see you on discord one of the coolest things that happened most recently on our patreon community where it was in our dungeon master advice chat where we had one of our patrons ask questions about building npcs and pre prepping stuff for their campaigns and uh, kelly and i got on that chat and by the end of that conversation we we're like this is our next episode of Dungeon Dudes on Thursdays. Uh, so uh, sometimes, uh, you know, our Patreon community is really amazing for generating awesome ideas and new things like that. And and uh, being a great source of like, it, it, you know, uh, answering questions, getting tips, tr tricks and advice, stuff that we can then share with the rest of our community. So we would love to have you on there. Uh, please join us. And uh, uh, all your help and support helps continue to make sure that what we do on this channel, whether it's our live streams or our regular shows, continues to be possible for us. So good time, good times there. Um, and uh, Joe, how about you? How are you doing? I am great. Um, <laughs> I feel like we don't have, we, we we don't have anything for you to say in our in our. In our I, new you know intro. what? I uh, I hope everyone just listens to uh, tabletop audio on their own, yeah. and uh, and you just use it as background uh, as ambient music during uh, these tough times. Um, I mean, whether or not we use them currently in our stream, we have in the past. They're one of our favorites. Uh, check it out. It's a great way to elevate your own game, uh, whether it be. Uh, with friends, family, or virtually. Yeah, I still got to get that audio routing figured out. But uh, if you do use Rule Twenty, uh, you can tabletop audio is like right integrated into it as well, so you can actually use a jukebox right on on there on Rule Twenty. Kelly, how about that haircut there, buddy? Uh, this is Chud's hair. I actually took <laughs> specific measures today. Um, there's a lot of blow drying, and um, there's this like powder that gives it volume, which is a very scary thing to do when you have as much hair as I have right now. So with the combination of the powder and the uh, the hair dryer, we have Chud's hair. You you look like a mad Hawaiian scientist. <laughs> the reason I'm wearing a hood today, to be honest. Hope we can get haircut soon. Well, with that, let's dive back into the ruins. You've come down the King's Road of Drakenheim. After surviving an ambush and fighting off these strange rat people thing monsters that attacked you, you've continued along following the trail of this ethereal piano music carried on the air by a majestic voice singing. As you get closer, you can see that on on the plaza that opens up where the King's Road widens, where uh, there is a open plaza that would have been once a trade square outside the city. Several other businesses, the ruins tumbled down, an old blacksmith's shop, an old apothecary is a bookseller and a few others on the outskirts of the city along the King's Road here, where there's a there's a great statue of the of um, the Von Kessel King for of several generations back. And the Dominating this square is the Black Ivory Inn. It is a large two-storied tavern with several co known in its day for grand accommodation, uh, accommodations and the wonderful live music that used to happen there. And unlike everything else around it, the Black Ivory Inn is in pristine condition. It's almost as if nothing ever happened. Though the buildings right to the left and right of it are ramshackle and tumbled down, the Black Ivory Inn is, is, is as clean and as, as good repair as the days before the meteor itself. Even the color in its drapes has not faded out at all. And light burns from within the tavern itself. You can even smell on the air. Is that... 
Is that bacon? Someone might be making breakfast. It's the smell of breakfast. And maybe coffee? It smells wonderful. And you can hear voices within, the clinking of glasses and laughter over the music and singing coming from the, the light of the inn. Guys, um, I think we can jot down that uh, uh, the, the inn looks like it's, uh, it's, it's in use. It's intact. Uh, this is good news, right? Uh, most, most of the houses we've seen here uh, need, need some repairs. But we can mark down that this one's good, right? Yes. Strange. Yes, almost too good. You're right, Chud. There must be some kind of weird... Ma- Nothing belongs this close. There's no way it's too yeah, good to be people true. People would come and venture here. Well, they, they did say that there might be uh, uh, adventures, and maybe maybe this is a popular spot. We should go uh, get some bacon. You're right. We should ambush them from the back. Uh, some back bacon. We, and 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 uh, scout it out. Good we, idea, we could, Chen. We, 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 scouting? Yeah, sure. Uh, we could try talking to some, some of the people there. Um, See. Yeah, we'll get them to talk and tell us how they've been able to set up an encampment so close to the city. Um, you, you'll notice also, is like, a good... I, as we're saying this, I'm double fisting health potions. <laughs> <laughs> I, took, I took one myself too. Um, hopefully, hopefully, you know, we can just like you know get a nice meal, maybe a, a bite to eat and, and, and something to drink. Uh, I mean, those those rats back there really did a number on us. Don't forget, though, we can eat after the mission. Although sustenance is important while you're on the road, too. Uh, as, as a wise, chef. Why is that? As a chef, I, I, food is important. Food is, is magical. Food is um, how, how I, how yeah, my, my heroics are in food, you know? you know? Food for the courageous through your stories of excellence, of course. I'll check it out, Chud. Um, and I'm going to try to start to move ahead and, and sneak uh, around the back of the yeah the Black so, Ivory Inn. So the Black Ivory Inn is a roughly L-shaped building with the, um, the main part of the L is built up onto the second level. And then the uh, a budding side of it juts out into a sort of a, a front yard and a backyard. So... The entrance to the inn is on a corner side of it that leads up to this, this parapet, and then the second level where there's some balconies over overhanging it. It's a fine building of a stone and wood lower level and then timbered on the second level with, uh, with thatch and shingles covering the second level of, of the roof and smoke rising up off the chimneys that heat the entire building. Around the back, uh, as you head around the back of the building itself, down one of the side, uh, out the there's a wider alley that goes around the side because at the back of the building um, is a small courtyard with um, the stables there, and so there is a small yard that's fenced in um, that appears to include a chicken coop, um, a pig pen. Uh, a small chicken coop, a small pig, pig pen, and a place for some some horses and a rotting stack of hay. There are no animals back here, however. Um, there is um, what you can smell quite powerfully is that it seems that there's a, a set of doors um, leading in through the back as well here, uh, perhaps into the kitchen itself. Uh, I want to try to peek through on the windows. Okay. There is a, a um, around the back, there is a pair of windows. Um, they, they're they shuttered, uh, but not completely drawn up. Make a stealth check. Uh, 22. Okay. You rush up to the window. The window opens into the main tap room of the Black Ivory Inn. You see in front of you a bustling 
tavern floor. It is very well appointed with mahogany tables and chairs and several chandelier style lanterns. They're not fancy ones, but lanterns coming down from, from above, illuminating the entire room and a beautiful, well appointed bar, um, which is actually on the same side as from where you're peering in but through the windows. To your left, what you can immediately see is the table right in front of you by the windows is empty, but there's at least a dozen, maybe more people in this tavern. They're laughing and smiling, taking breakfast and clinking glasses over coffee. And in front of you, you can see that there is a grand piano set up where the staircase leads up to the second level. And there's a small stage and there is a well-dressed man with a small goatee and his hair tied back in a ponytail and he is um and he is his eyes are closed and he is playing the piano enraptured with the with the music that he is creating as it as it flows out through the room sitting on top of the piano is a striking black-haired woman uh who is singing uh, a, ba- uh, a lonely ballad. The rest of the, the people in the room are taking their breakfast and listening to the music with rapt attention. I, I, I slink away and relay the information to Rain and Chud. It looks like a, like a lively inn. Almost like a, a, you know, a, a place out of, out of what, like there, it has no business being this, this normal Maybe our intelligence has been wrong about the city. Do do you think that maybe that they didn't scout enough around the outer edges of the city to find that people are living here again? You guys are the the first first ones. (laughs) (laughs) Rumors. uh, Rumors. It it appears that um, some citizens have started to move back in and and have made a comfortable living for themselves. Well, why don't we just... uh... Go say hey. See if they're uh, hospitable. Locals? Maybe they are. I mean, this place seems to have been um, around for some time. They what must if, be locals. What if one of us goes in and the other ones stay outside? I think my appearance might scare them off a little bit. I will volunteer to watch the door and see if anything strange approaches. We have a signal. Somebody, somebody like brave should should go in. So you're right, Chad. Yes, you. I, I, you're right. I might not be up to the challenge. Yeah, I will also send as brave, but not quite as brave as you. I will, um, I will accompany you, but I will uh, be on my guard. Uh, okay. And I start to kind of half push you, half walk behind you with like with my hand on your shoulder yeah um and my other hand uh close to my my sword i I have a horn and if you hear my horn know that there is trouble coming from outside sten do do i knock chud what is the uh what is our call for aid for rain do we use the what would you like to use uh i mean i i I would say some. I'm I'm a big foodie, so so you know, um, some sort of food product. Maybe um, what, what did you have for dinner last night, uh, Stan? Stew. Ah, stew. If did I yell stew, help to you, make you it. You cooked it. Yeah, you you cooked. You right. cooked my dinner last night. Right. Uh, sorry, it was all very confusing. There was a lot happening. Uh, the, I got put in charge of a unit. People are saying I killed a a giant. You know, rough I night. Did. It was yeah, an accident. I, I've heard those that were there tell me firsthand. Mm-hmm. True. Now, I mean, if you happen to come out, I smelled bacon. Bring some bacon. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Sustenance. You said it was important. I I walk up to the door of the inn and I I like kind of breathe in deep and like give one last look at the two of you, and then I push the doors to the inn open. Okay. The door creaks open, opening into the Black Ivory Inn. This well, the, the smell of bacon and maybe slightly overcooked eggs hits your nostrils, 
with war the rounded out by the sound by the smell of coffee and uh freshly baked bread maybe there's a few beans as well it's kind of a you know you got a cook's nose yeah and something's maybe those you know definitely time to make the, make sure those eggs get cooked for sure uh- I um I turn back to Stan and I'm like, so what, what what do I do? Do I like do, what? Just talk with confidence. As the the doors <laughs> open, the patrons of the inn all turn to you, and they all shout out, "Huzzah! Welcome!" And the the music flares dr- dr- dramatically, and the 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 barkeeper, uh, this this um. It, the, this stout looking uh looking halfling with short cut hair and a very wide face says oh welcome another another one of the stout folk first coffee's on me or you know we won't blame you it hasn't hit noon yet but at the black ivory inn you got some good sh- i got some good sherry for another one of the stout folk if you come on in welcome the name's rowan this is the black ivory inn they seem friendly my guard oh. completely drops. Uh, yeah, and I and I and I I I walk over and I sit at the bar. Um, <sighs> I, I, sorry to bother you, sir. I just um, I thought if somebody should let you know uh, you might be overcooking the the eggs. He uses. He, 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 he yell, yells back. Uh, uh, you you hear Rowan yell yell back. June. June, we got a uh, we got a uh, a connoisseur here. Better up the game, Charlotte. He claps over to uh, the the piano player, Charlotte, Randall. Another tune. What'll it be? We've got beans, breakfast, toast, butter. It's all fresh, all made in house. Black yes. Ivory in special. Will you be? Uh, well, having a, are are you coming in from from the country then? Oh, we're actually uh, we're with the um, the lanterns, and we're just here to. Uh, should I be? Should I be? Um, uh, should we be? Uh, I'm here. So I'm on a I'm diplomatic uh, scouting mission. Um, just uh, wondering what you guys are all up to here in the end. <laughs> it's been some time since we've had the city watch come come round this way. I, I assure you, no funny business going on in this inn. We ain't got no gambling rings. There's no rats in the basement. There ain't no strange, mysterious cannibal gonna chop you up into little pieces and eat you in the inn. Perfectly normal establishment Good. running here, City City Watch. All those tropes that y'all, those stories y'all hear about, none of that's true. We just got well, good food and good coffee. That's great. I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of cannibals. Uh, oh, hold on. I, I pull out a crumpled little piece of paper and I, I unroll it. Um, ahem. would you like to join the Hooded Lanterns? Oh, um, me, my, my military days are long past me. Never started them, mind you. <laughs> I think I have to lose a couple, of, lose a fair amount of weight. No, I'm not one for swinging swords. I'm one for a swinging beer. Okay, okay. Um, and where are you? What What do you know? I'm sitting right at the end beside him. Oh. I, I I feel like I propped shut up on a on a to stand on like the stool beside me. Um, I'm supposed to ask them what they know. What What, is, what they know? What do you know? Barkeep. Um, we have been charged by Elias Drexel leader of the Hooded Lanterns. Uh, we looked t- to learn more about the city uh, after the cataclysm. Oh, I can uh, tell we- you all about the city of Drakenheim. I mean, if you're just visiting the city now, but s- sirs, you're you're of the city watch. What, what? I ain't got any good rumors or any good gossip these times. Well, you know, you might want to talk to June. She's in, the, in all, on all the gossip. Of course, busiest in running through these ways, I would be no good innkeeper if I couldn't tell you all everything about the city like the back of my hand well we're we're very impressed that you were able to um keep such a regular routine during uh such troubling times well you know things are bad in the economy these times all those rumors about you know the royal scandal right and and of course the the illyrians are always causing trouble and whatnot and the dukes are coming coming back up but but 
you know, it's, times have been rough, but, you know, as, as long as there's people always got to eat and drink, you know, that's who the, are you trading with who who comes by these parts? Oh, well, we head down to the market every Saturday, you know, and that's that's where we get all the br the bread baked fresh. I go down the street, the street to, to old Buck, the baker. He he brings in all the fresh loaves every morning, and it, when we get our eggs and our we get our eggs just from this lovely farm outside Emberwood Village. All the lumber we cook everything all in house as Emberwood well. It comes Village. in, wow. comes in all in there. Oh yeah, it's all, all fresh every morning. You Can know? you tell me where Lots the baker of, is from here? We must investigate. Oh well, well Buck, he's just up around the block. Um, Fascinating. So, so things are, are pretty good here in Drakenheim lately. Oh, I, I mean, you know, times being what they are, things have always been a little bit tough. But you know, it's good as it's all ever been. Uh, well, you must, you must have your ear to the ground. Do you know of this mysterious crystal uh, we've been warned about? He looks at you crystal uh yeah there's a crystal that we're supposed to be keeping our eyes out seen any uh crystals oh so you? you're 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 looking for some contraband then aren't you oh you city watchmen all so good about making sure there ain't no smuggling dealing in our fair sh city well i assure you i don't know anything about any new sort of sort of stuff like that that the kids might be doing now that that not for me not for me i don't allow any of that here and and I've never seen any of it it, it it come through would you like to donate to the hooded lanterns i pay my taxes now oh who's 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 collected them someone must not have been buying oh uh, nearly a decade a decade i wish it seemed like just yesterday I was writing my taxes up to the the Lord Steward to, to make sure that he understood that I had paid every single penny that was due to me to the crown. I, I I'm a legitimate chide. businessman. <laughs> I'm not going to be shaken down by any of you thugs. Barkeep, uh, I, I, I wonder if there is a misunderstanding. Uh, and I turn to Chud. There may be uh, someone impersonating someone from the royal family um, taking advantage of these small-time folk. Uh, that's uh, That's bad. This is uh this is ill news to hear of uh, people representing the royal family uh, improperly. Uh, even the hooded lanterns could be uh, bad for our namesake. We must correct this at once. Point well, if there's something, in the, if there is someone impersonating a royal taxpayer, I tell you, I am not paying my taxes again. I have my receipts. Well, we will get to the bottom of this. Do you mind uh, showing us your receipts? Uh, and can you tell us? Uh, who it is you paid directly your last taxes to. We believe there might be someone uh, being... Am I uh, being detained? Are you going to arrest me, sir, for not showing you my papers right now? No, no, no. We're, uh, we're just... Uh, I have a list of questions that I'm supposed to ask, and uh, we're, the, we're, the first, uh, we're the first ones here in some time, so it's just um, confusing that you... Uh, have been paying your taxes when uh, we haven't we haven't been here to collect them. Is it Stan is, is something going Are on? Are you trying to frame me and say that I've been evading my taxes? No, no. Um, tell you what, I am going to leave Forget now. It. Uh, good sir. Uh, yeah, we do. We don't mean to to press. We're just quite confused at the situation. Maybe I'll take that coffee now. Why, certainly. Can we invite our other friend in? She, uh... Oh, of course. She looks, uh... not human. Is that okay? Totally fine. We're accepting of all people and cultures. So before I go in... I'm, I'm kind of hearing this, but I actually walked a little bit away... There was, we, we saw a stable, right? Uh -huh. Like all of us saw it. Can I, I want to do a perception check. I have advantage on that rely on smell. I want to smell. What is the bacon made of? Okay. Okay. So I'm just like, there were no animals back there. 
Or... That's a 19. Smell the bacon. And... If you... I'm still outside. I'm, like, wafting it. Smells right, but as you go to chew it, it's got a texture more like leather. It's like cured, over cured, thick and rough. It looks juicy and delicious, but smells great. But something's wrong with it. Now she's Not still pork. outside. Not beef. What is this? I'm still outside. Mm-hmm. I want to, um... Stu! Is there any other windows that lead to the kitchen? Um, incidentally, uh, the, uh, the, the kitchen itself, uh, and the, the back room don't have any windows. So any- all, all the, all the windows are open into the second floor? Mm-hmm. Or into the main in room itself. And no doors or anything, it's all shut off. As as you well, you'd need to circle the perimeter, but if you do so, yeah. yeah. There's not a single door leading there's not a back door to the kitchen. There's not a I thought Sten window. saw a door to the kitchen at the back, no? There's a door at the back, but it leads into the tap room. Ah. Um I want to peek through the door that leads to the tap room the back door yeah okay so then you would by by looking through um here i'll uh let's bring us over into our map and i'll bring you all over i'm more or less like something doesn't smell right (laughs) so here is the tap room itself proper and then sten and chud you're at the bar and then rain um the this is where the uh this up here is where the other door is Mm, okay Mm. uh sten yes chud yes sir are we allowed to ask them to look around? Like, do we have that uh, authority? The Hooded Lanterns haven't been here in some time. Uh, we might be wary to overstep as we try to earn the trust of the locals. This, I'm, I'm going to try something. Uh, this man seems, he seems uh, out of touch with the nature of things around it, but uh, we do not... I, I, I feel as a it's some sort of coping mechanism for the tragedy that has befallen the city. I'm going to, I'm going to do this uh, with tact. Uh, Barkeep, what's your name? He says, well, it's Rowan. I just told you. Right. Um, I'm, I'm Chudley Hopkins and um, I am a member of the hooded lanterns of Drakenheim. And, uh, is it okay if we look around? We're looking for crystals. Listen, you can, you're fine. You can go as long as you don't harass my staff. No, not by by all means. I'd love to. Don't some, harass uh, my some... patrons too. If you want to ask uh, them course, any questions, you 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 be fair. I, I'm always fair. Go so, ahead then. It's fine. You don't have a what warrant, would you like me to do? do you? Uh, do we, do we have, do we have a warrant? We are charged by Elias Drexel of the Hooded Lanterns to I have this... accomplish our goals yeah. and missions and to, uh, stop, uh, stop any ill gotten gains from leaving Drakenheim and to secure the city. Fine. Well, let me know when you want your breakfast and if you want any more coffee, I'll get you. This is a place out of time. Uh, Chud, what would you like me to do? What, what are your orders? Feels right. Uh, we should look around. Uh, this does seem a little suspicious, right? 
I, outside. I, <laughs> you hear my horn blow, but I'm not like full out blowing it. I'm just like, burr, burr. and that- it's rain. She might be in trouble. Should we go out back? We're going to step out. <laughs> uh, I, I, follow the, I follow my ears. Okay. Rain, what is it? So, you, you blew? I smell bacon, but there are no animals. And I noticed there are no windows to the kitchen. Where are they getting their meat from? It is My nose doesn't lie. Peculiar. peculiar. I suspect that they might have some other source of, of uh, dried goods, maybe in the pantry. Um, Fresh bacon? After to be honest, our, it's a bit leathery than regular bacon. After mm-hmm. our uh, run-in with the rattling folk, it is... Interesting that they've been able to carve out such a simple existence in such a fraught territory. Sten, Rain, we didn't even ask them about the rat folk. He mentioned he didn't have any rats in his cellar. Maybe that's code. For he does have rats in his cellar. Didn't he say something about cannibalism? Oh, he said there wasn't any. He was overly against the cannibalism. Which was... Which is good. We want that. Yes, Chud. Maybe he is under some kind of uh, spell or um, maybe that was a signal to uh, us that we should keep our eyes open. Maybe someone has him under hostage. Oh. Hmm. He has given us permission to roam the grounds. Uh, where would you like us to go, Chud? Um, I think if we look upstairs and downstairs, and I mean, if we can check out the rooms in this place and it checks out, then we can mark it off and just say, yeah, there's uh, people living here. So I, I think we just uh, just do a thorough... You know, we don't have to like tip over all of their stuff, but I guess just just... Just take a gander. I say we look behind the doors. You're right. You never know what they're hiding behind them. You're Upstairs, right, downstairs, basement, that kitchen. Again, what if there's a fire in that kitchen? There's no safety exits. Just, Do you feel comfortable don't... in the kitchen, Chud? Uh, I know you have a, a, a lot of experience I'm as a cook. I'm always comfortable in the kitchen. I, I hope they don't mind me barging in. I'd love to see what sort of uh, spices they're using and uh, how they're cooking their meat and who the heck is overcooking those eggs. Because, I mean, eggs are pretty easy. You don't have to overcook them. It's not like, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll take the kitchen. I'll go upstairs. Rain, you go down? I guess. I feel weary about exploring an unknown space alone, though. Chad, do you think it's wise to split up, or do you think we should stay together? Should we split up to cover more ground, or stay together? Um... Uh, in my experience in the battlefield, generally uh, y- you can uh, cover more ground if you split up. Split the party is what I always say. Agreed. Agreed. All right. We'll yes, take sir. your wise words to heart and go our separate ways. And again, I have a horn to call, but if something happens, just yell. I have keen hearing. Uh, all right. Yes, if you find anything, uh, I will report to you immediately, Chad. They know um, I look like a rat, right? I told them that you weren't okay. regular. They ex- they seem very accepting. Okay, okay. You Good. weren't regular human. You were better human. Uh, I'm going to head upstairs. <laughs> Stead just confidently walks upstairs. Um, I'm just a guard in the, in a... This feels like the old, the old times. Okay. So, Sten... Um, you, the the three of you all walk back into the inn, correct? Yes. You all walk walk back on the in the inn, and as you all enter in one more time together, the uh, assembled crowd goes, "Huzzah! Welcome to the Black Ivory Inn!" And the innkeeper stands oh. up again and says, "Ah, welcome all to the Black Ivory Inn." 
We're just about to serve breakfast time. Come on in, sit down. We'll fix you some coffee and some bacon and eggs. I, uh, I, 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 I take my two comrades <laughs> by like just the backs of the shoulders and I step back out of the. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, and did they I, greet I, like that even though you were just there? We, so we step, we all step out and then we step back in and the walk end. back in. The, the innkeeper looks at you. Well, don't just stand on that threshold. Come on in, sit down, have a meal. They are friendly folk. Been some time since we have had any other members of the city watch coming along in. What can I do with you for, officers? Well, we're, we're, we're uh, you have my order, uh, good sir. Uh, coffee and breakfast. Very good, very good. June, June, bacon and eggs, three rounds for the good guardsman. I'm gonna go into your kitchen now. <laughs> uh, Excuse me. Oh, another one of the fair stout folk. Ah, I know a nose when I see one. You're a gourmet. You want you want us to come and see the missus cooking up a storm back in the kitchen then? Yes. <laughs> Stan, I'm, I'm worried. I'm concerned, guys. They seem uh, overly friendly. Charlotte, put on another round. And the piano continues to play the same ballad as before. There's something strange going on here. Uh, I'm going to start my uh, kind of a, 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 a kind of a sweep around the area, just kind of checking out what's happening in the immediate bar area, like, this, like the, at the tables and stuff, just kind of like just kind of walking around, checking things out. I'm going to I'll approach a patron and sit next to them. Um, this man is still groggily, um, mulling over a coffee. Um, but, uh, Joe, what, what is Sten going to do? Uh, uh, I'm just going to kind of like weave through the, the crowd. Yeah. And just kind of like, just, just kind of like nonchalantly walking around just kind of like looking at different tables, smiling to different patrons. Yeah. The the patrons uh everyone is sitting down enjoying their breakfast. They've all got their 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 plates in front of them and 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 coffees. Many of them are listening to Charlotte's song with rapt attention. Um it well the the whole place is crowded. Uh there's there's actually uh and the tables are filled. It's very easy to walk around because there's really no one moving between the tables beyond yourself. Uh everyone's sitting down. And as you you pass it across the tables, uh, in the center of the room there are four. Uh, there's there's four people. Uh, one a uh, human man, one a dwarf, one an elven woman, and one a halfling woman. And the four of them look like they're garbed as adventurers. It's unmistakable from their rough and tumble garb. And they've got their swords and weapons slung over their chairs. And they're and in front of them as they're downing their breakfast, they've got a map leading off to uh, the that that says that's marked on it secret location of Wave Echo Cave. Contact Grundon Rock Seeker just outside the city. And they're all talking about their great adventure in this far off town of Fandelver that they're going to go on soon. I I I kind of like stop and make it obvious that I'm listening, and then I kind of interrupt. I, 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 excuse me, are you are you from these parts? Uh, one of one of the the man looks up to you and says, "Ah, hail, city g- good guardsman. Uh, I myself am from Drakenheim, but my compatriots come come to us from lands far beyond. We are." Don't worry, we're we're not getting up uh, up into any trouble here in the city, right, Lita? And uh, the the halfling woman nods, uh, and the 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 dwarf slaps down his coffee and says, "I want another beer, not coffee." You are a resident of Drakenheim? How long have you been in the city? When did you return? Oh, I, I, the, the man says, oh, I lived in Drakenheim all my life. I've traveled quite abroad for some time. That's where I met Todrick and Miley and Lita here. But, uh, we've all come back and we thought we would set out on our next quest from, uh, from a place called home. I was giving my respects to the, the, the flame keepers here, and then we'll be setting off a, a little while from now. Yeah, this, what you call home is an adventure in its own. 
Um, did you manage past the rat folk? He looks at you with a puzzled look. Rat folk? I mean, I, I once helped uh, an innkeeper in a far off ta- tavern slay some giant rats in their basement, but rat people? Pfft, no such thing. These were the size of almost humans. They carried makeshift weapons. Um, they attacked us on our way here. We barely made it through the ruins of the outskirts of the city. How did you fare so easily? Outskirts of the ruins? <laughs> You're trying to play a joke on me of some kind? I... I and 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 I just he Sten's just taking a second because this is a lot to process. He's starting to think that he's not sure where he is. Rain, while Sten's doing that, what would you like to do? I just want to come along this wall. And is this in terms of the um this spot on the map, does it like flip up? Yeah, it it is. Okay. Uh or is there something underneath? That's open. No, it, it, it's it's open. There's a pretty nasty spill running along the wall here. Let me touch it and I smell it. What is it? Smells like rotten eggs. <laughs> Strange. Maybe this is the smell from outside. Sir, I'd like I'd like to take a look. I can smell amazing cooking <coughs> when I smell it. Keen knows. I'd really like to take a look at your um, your kitchen. And I, I open up the bar and I start to go back. I don't even wait for him to give me permission. Oh, go right ahead. Just don't bug June too much. She's got a bit of a temper on her. And I open up the kitchen door. Yeah. Um, in, in the kitchen beyond is uh, a another halfling woman tending to a large hearth and she's cooking up a storm back here she's got a bunch of griddles going she's cracking some eggs and she's making up a bunch of food i want to explore around the kitchen and see if any of this rotten egg is coming from anywhere similarly along the wall okay give me a perception check Eleven. You can see it looks like there's this slick of trans of like translucent but thick viscous liquid and it's trailing up the wall heading towards the next doorway. But it looks like this spill is either coming from the doorway, but you might be trailing out into the room as well. It's a little bit like, I don't know, some, something's been spilled all over the floor, just but just in certain areas. Cook, what is this strange spill? Do you not take care of your kitchen? She looks up and says, huh. what spill? I don't see anything. Don't look like nothing to me. Are you judging me on my kitchen? On my kitchen's cleanliness? How dare you? It's a fine kitchen. I just happen to notice. Maybe my eyes are deceiving me. I thought there was a spill. With that, let's pan back over to Chud. What's Chud doing? So Chud has like climbed up onto a stool between these two patrons. And um, uh, he's hoping to be served coffee. Does do I get coffee? Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to very carefully. I actually like. Yeah. Um, he puts the coffee in in front of you. Pours the liquid out. But says, Enjoy. I I dip my finger in and I like smell it. it smells like I, coffee. It's hot. I just touch my tongue to it to see. Pretty weak coffee. Barely tastes like anything. It's like water. I I turn to one of the patrons next to me and I'm just like <clears throat> uh, so um Drakenheim, eh? struck by uh, uh, a big meteor a while ago how how how's that going for you guys the man turns up <laughs> if only his whole town's a dump 
Someone should just come and burn it all down, shouldn't they? <laughs> king, king can stuff it. Queen's a harlot. Kids are messing around behind his back. What a joke! <laughs> So uh, you're you're uh, you're saying that there the, no meteor struck Drakenheim? That's a ridiculous story. Never happened. Looks at you. I wish in my dreams. <laughs> I like lean forward and I like poke his face. Um, he <laughs> slaps you back as he says, ah, "What's he doing?" His face was super squishy to the touch. Like, squishier than normal? I mean, he's an old man with flabby cheeks. <laughs> Do you got any, uh, got any stew? Do you have any stew? As, st uh, Sten, see on the ground, the, there's this spill on the ground, kind of translucent. And see it, it's not a spill, though, it's... It's actually more like a a line. It's flowing like a perfect river, and it's pooling around the feet of the four people that are seated at this table. And and where is it coming from? It's coming from under the next table. I I, I start to like hastily investigate. So like I get down on my four all fours and I kind of look under the table. And then I get up and I start to go to the next table, like where it's like trying to backtrack it, kind of just ignoring the fact that there's people even around anymore. Yeah, it, now it's like it now leads things up are just... to the wall here, and then it, it follows along the wall back towards where Rain is. I keep following it. Rain, do you see this? And you see me at the door, and I also I'm like, is coming from in here, and I do a little like whistle to chud and i'm like i, I clamor over the bar you say this is where you're gonna get your stew best in house you should talk to the cook you have lots in common i'd love to pay thanks to the the cook I'll, uh bye i agree something is i whisper something weird's going on uh, this I, is super weird i say we follow the spills <laughs> and i point to where it's coming from like and i'm gonna go into the the next door i i, I follow rain's uh okay direction i'll, I'll stay back here <laughs> find your stew you open the door and you are hit with the smell of sulfur uh, in the room is a large fun. metallic tub In the in, and uh, in, in the in this sort of area of the t of the room, the, those barrels are really just this huge metallic vat, like a bathtub. Oh, and, Stan, don't don't touch the. And goo, it looks okay? like it's overflowing with this <laughs> thick goo that's spreading out across the floor and out through the door. I take out my carved stick. <laughs> my whittled stick and I poke the goo it jiggles <laughs> I poke it again and the the, the the woman turns to you the June the cook says now now don't go poke, poke it around in my cooking wouldn't be good for you to do that now would it now how about you all just come along Go back and have a bit of a coffee. And you can all what? make wisdom saving throws. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. June? June? 15. 16. 3. <laughs> Sten, you are charmed. I love the goo. <laughs> I will go have my coffee. Thank you, June. Sten, why? And I just walk back to the. <laughs> Sten, wait, where are you go? Walk back out, sit down at the bar, and I pick up uh, Chud's coffee. That's. She tried to do something to your minds. You can feel it. Sten wa walks back out and start and is at the bar drinking some coffee. Uh, 
uh, Rain, uh, what do we do? Uh, I don't like this place. Uh, what was in that bathtub? I like, I, I run into the back room and I like look into the, the tub and I'm guessing I just see the same goo. You see the goo flooding out of the tub a little bit more aggressively. And from the, the earlier room, you can hear the shuffling of feet. As quite suddenly, Rain, you look back around, and the patrons are all getting up from their chairs in unison with each other. You hear all the table, you hear all the chairs screech as one, as every single person in the bar stands up. And they say, Why don't you stay with us? Why don't you stay with us? Why don't you stay with us forever? Roll for initiative. Ah, creepy in. I think it's actually, I think we've already solved the mystery. It's just, it's a nice place. They just want us to stay forever. That's quite, <laughs> they're quite charming, actually. Uh, I got a 20. I got a 15. I got an 8. <laughs> Drinking my coffee. It's not great coffee, but it's free. Hi, I'm Sten, and this is the Black Ivory Inn, where everyone's welcome. I start jumping in on it. Stay with us forever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you guys got? Uh, 20. 20? Okay, 20. 20 for Chud. 15 for Rain. Sten? And, and 8. Big old, big old eight. All right. Chud, you are the first to act. What will you do? As, uh, as you see in front of you, the puddle of broiling liquid flows over and begins glowing with a strange light. It's a color that you've never seen before, rippling and bubbling all throughout the room. And before you, it takes the, um, and as it roils and burps and bulges, the faces of the inn patrons appear in the surface of the this bubbling stew of awfulness as the horrible creature coalesces into solid form. <laughs> uh, as it starts to, I... Um... I panic, uh, just fire my bow. Like I, as, as I just start, I like pull out an arrow and I'm fumbling with it as it's starting to form. And I'm like trying to get it in and I'm like, ah, 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 and I like let out a shot at the beast in front of me. Uh, first though, I'm going to name it. I, I yell out. I'm like, oh, there's a, there's some goo soup stew back here. I'm going to shoot it with a bow and I'm going to name it as my slayer's prey. Okay. Uh, getting 15 to hit. The As the arrow sails towards it, a pseudopod sprouts out from the amorphous mass and bats the shot away. Uh, Chud runs and uh, jumps underneath this table. <laughs> and, I, I, and he yells out, he goes, the bathtub came alive! The various, all right, the various patrons, the music stops, the patrons stand. Several of them walk towards the doors. Several of them walk towards the windows. Several of them shuffle towards and across the bar and forwards. Around Sten, walking closer, the innkeeper. Here they come. Rain, it is your turn. I say, I would only stay here if the bacon was real. And I, um, as a bonus action, use my crimson right to imbue my weapon. Uh, I do take 1d4 damage while I do so. So I take 2 damage. 
in order to do this, but I get an extra D4 on my weapon as long as I have it in my hands. Oops, sorry. And I take a swing at the cook because I am unimpressed with the cooking. June! <laughs> oh, uh, 19 to hit. That's a hit. Hot <laughs> dice. Oh, no. Oh, and I got a one on one of them, so I'm going to reroll that, and it ends up being a one anyways. Uh, 22 damage to June. Okay. As your blow collides with June's face, she bursts into a bag of pus and ooze and collapses with a splatter to the ground. And the the amorphous liquids collect themselves together and f- pull back up the line of goo that was trailing out of her foot like someone retching a booger of snot back up their nose like and there's kind of that sort of gross noise as what was june is retracted back into the mass of the main uh main ooze you know <laughs> and then i uh back up towards this door but i don't want to go in this door i say chad with your great fighting skills you must kill the goo <laughs> Uh! that's my response alrighty the innkeeper roiling forward in this blubbering mass of screeching faces all chattering and talking comes the innkeeper it roils out of the room splashing um, and heaving forward uh, as it as it does so and um and so the the forms um oh they're they're stuck there the various forms uh of the creatures rush forward and as it does so these tendrils of ooze burst out of the mouths of several of the patrons forms and begin to envelop around sten ah um sten uh i need you to make a wisdom saving throw you know i'm good at these six six okay Sten, you take 10 points of psychic damage. Um, and you're, you feel your memories being pulled out of you. And My you son. need to roll a d4 and subtract that from any ability check or attack roll you make. Oh, God. <laughs> Lucky d4. Um, and in the midst of that as well, the, um, the larger form sends out a massive blubbering limb to smack you rain getting a 19 to hit yes and you take um 10 points of bludgeoning damage and two points of psychic damage sten as you've been attacked by this the charm on you is broken and you are free to act normally Ah, my I miss my son and uh and I pull out my two swords and I just start wildly hacking at the goo patrons. So uh first attack at um guy beside me it's a uh, 17 minus 1 is a 16 plus 6 22. You stab into him. How much damage does it deal? Uh 10 damage. As you stab into him, he collapses into a seething mass of jelly that blubbers down and retracts backwards towards the main mass with a sickening slurping sound. Uh, I use my horde breaker and take another swing at the one beside it, uh, right beside me. I get a 17 minus 2, 15 plus 6, 21. That's a hit for uh, uh, only 5 damage. With a swift cut, it bursts open like a sack of jelly, splattering across the floor before retracting back to the main mass. And then I, uh, I jump, I do like a, a cool slide over the, the bar, and I come up behind the, the, the thing that's right here, whatever this is, and I try to stab it in the back. Uh, yeah, it's just a dude. 
<laughs> it's one of the Take patrons. This, dude. Uh, nine minus three is a six. Plus six is twelve. Uh, it bounces off this, and it and the as you hit the the creature, it kind of blubbers and just turns into this blubbery form that then just gets sucked back into the main mass. Uh, and then I'm gonna kind of get up here behind the uh, behind the other two. Alrighty, top of the round with Chud. Uh, Chud clamors out and once again fumbles with an arrow and attempts to shoot at uh, one of the patrons. Uh, and he he looks hesitant because it looks like a person. But he kind of he kind of like looks away at the last second as he uh, takes a shot. You shoot blinded? No, well, no. I'm. We're just flavoring it. I want all of his stuff to you be. Clo- you close your eyes. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, ah, and I just fire, and I do. Um, I get a twenty-two to hit. It's a hit, and um, that's with my longbow. Chud, you are showing great aptitude. I can't even hit these things with my eyes open. Uh, so what, what actually happens is I shoot and it misses and hits the table, hitting one of the knives on the table, which then ricochets into him and does nine damage. It bursts and the, there's a splatter of goo across that gets sucked back into the main, the main mass. And, um, I duck back down under the table. Was that just one shot or was that two? Uh, that was one shot. Oh, yeah, that's right. You don't have anything else to attack twice. Correct. Yeah. All right. Level four. The patrons continue to shuffle forward. And the barkeep looks at you, Stan, and says, You better behave in my (laughs) end. Uh-oh. I bet he didn't pay taxes. (laughs) Uh Uh-oh. We should ask for those receipts. Rain, it is your turn. All right. I am assuming this door in front of you is open. Um, I'm going at him. I'm going at the big blob. Going for the Go blob. For Go for the blob. <laughs> 17. It's a hit. Ah! Nice. My weapon is glowing with the power of the blood. Blah. And I hit. Oh, uh, what is it? It's one and twos for yep. a great weapon master, right? Reroll those. Okay. Twenty-three damage. Oh, to the big blob. Oh, the big blob shudders uh, as as the hit connects with it, uh, and and s- parts of it spill out, forming the shapes of hands and feet and faces and clothing that all babble and blather onwards. No, no. Ah! They scream out. And I use mobile to make my movement without getting an opportunity attack, and I make my way across the room. Beside Chud to like Chud, don't worry. If anyone is gonna get hurt, it will be me on your behalf because you're the only one that can save us. I'm hiding under a table and I'm like, no. Roiling <laughs> out like a tidal wave comes the massive amorphous <laughs> goo. And it brings down with a thunderous slap uh, its limbs on both Chud and Rain, getting a 20 against Chud and a 21 against Rain. Uh, uh, Chud, you take eight points of damage, and Rain, you take six. And then uh, uh, it's bludgeoning. bludgeoning. And then Chud, you take six points of psychic damage, and Rain, you take three. Oh no! <laughs> and then, <Uh-oh>. um, <laughs> surrounded the other, um, the others um, send out smaller tendrils to surround Sten. Sten, I need another wisdom saving throw. Ah, my oh, mind! God. I miss my son. I got a five. <laughs> the tendrils swamp into your mind. They go up your nostrils and inside your ear and down your mouth. And you take 16 points of psychic damage. And oh, now the, the penalty to your attack rolls is increased to a D, uh, D6. Uh-huh. Uh, 
I scream out in agony. I should probably update this. Sten, it is your turn. I am badly bloodied. I, <laughs> I, oh, here, let me update my, uh, Oh, that's much worse. <laughs> oh, no. And in the chaos, I'm just trying to fight at these tentacle tendril things. So I'm just taking wild shots. So I just take like a swipe at this one beside me. I get a 12 minus a 3, uh, 15. Uh, that still connects with it. Blop! And I, uh, I, for 7 damage. Which one are you attacking? Uh, the one to my immediate uh, right. Oh, the innkeeper. Is that the innkeeper? Yeah. So you cave in the head of the innkeeper and he blurbles down to the ground and spills before being sucked back into the mass of the blob. And then I bring my at the same stroke with my horde breaker. I take another swipe at the one directly in front of me. Oh, getting a zero. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you roll a one? No, I rolled a three minus oh. three. <laughs> So a uh, six. I got a six. Yeah, that's not doing it. Um, and then uh, with my uh, bonus action, I uh, I continue my assault, um, getting a, a sixteen, a fourteen minus four, with a six. That's a hit for uh, on the uh, again on the one right in front of me, but uh, for five damage. Uh, you send him splattering to pieces, which get retract back through your legs with a sucking sound. And, and, and I'm just screaming, Oh, Chad, what do we do? Chad, help us. The goo, the goo is overtaking me. <laughs> Chad, it's your turn. Um, seeing my two friends getting brutally murdered by this giant... <laughs> horrible monster i start crying and then i pull out my leadership. sword yeah i pull out my sword and i just like bolt out from under the table and i try to run like through this thing towards sten and as i do so i just kind of do this with the sword and uh, i'm gonna also cast a hunter's mark on it uh because my bravery takes hold and I run screaming and flailing towards the beast. Um, I got a 14. It's a hit. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, so that will be, so now it has Hunter's Mark and my Slayer's Prey. Uh, doing 18 damage. Nice. Woohoo! You cut into it, sending blurbling masses that writhe and gibble and gibber out. Uh, so, so one of them saying, "Oh, it was such a nice day. What is that falling from the sky?" What? No! No! <laughs> More shuffling of feet, as with a sudden slurp. The various patrons of the inn are all suddenly retracted back into the main mass with an awful slurping sound. And as they all retract backwards, Sten, give me a uh, uh, um, a um, a dexterity saving throw. Uh, oh, baby. <laughs> Uh, 23. You are not Ooh. knocked prone. The other two, though, remain blocking the doorway. Rain, it is your turn. Okay, um, so because I begin my turn with fewer than 18 hit points, I got to make a DC 8 wisdom saving throw. Okay. Luckily, I have zero, plus zero to my wisdom, you know. Oh, I got a 16. Okay. Okay. Or else I would have just started attacking anything wildly. Uh, but luckily, the closest thing to me anyways would be the big blob. So I'm going to go for it. Nice. Whoop -ah. 15? That is a hit. Yes! Oh, redo that one. Oh, it's the same. Um, 24 damage! There's a mighty cut. And an awful popping and a slurping noise that resounds as the creature's mass shudders and writhes. Um, is there anything else you want to do on your turn? move away from it again and i say guys 
Don't come near me. I can attack anything. All righty. The creature shudders and begins slinking down through the floorboards of the inn, retracting back the other masses and slinking away, collapsing into jelly and flowing back underneath the floorboards of the Black Ivory Inn. As it does so, the color and smells leave the entirety of the establishment. You are standing in a barren and rotting kitchen. And that's where we're going to end for the night. Ah! Oh. But it didn't die, did it? I don't think it died. It got away. I'm like so scared <laughs> and so confused. <laughs> How many people did we just kill? Did we just did we did we just kill those people? I have a tendril in my brain. In your brain? It got right up there. It's it nothing's just... been up that far. <laughs> before oh. oh man i think i forgot math it it pokes something oh guys i i think we're gonna mark this one as uh not not very good for a for a safe hideout and i de-transform from my rat like self and i say that was that was gonna collapse on that stool for a minute yeah I just as, as i down. try to collect my thoughts as of of uh, my family being hurt and tortured as I was like, my brain is riddled. <laughs> well, I think we will see if our burgeoning hooded lanterns are harrowed by this journey or if they continue. Uh, I think we've got a little bit more left in this scouting mission. Uh, don't you think? <laughs> oh, yeah. I yeah. think we, do. we, we have we, not. We have one of the three <laughs> slash four places we're supposed to. <laughs> Go, almost so. died every time <laughs> alrighty well we will certainly be back for more next week uh, as we follow more of the adventures of the Hooded Lanterns in their very first foray into the city of Drakenheim a massive thank you to everyone uh, in our cast to Jill Joe and Kelly for playing along as always a cool shout out to Kyle who well uh, he uh, is not with us in, in person is with us in spirit uh, is with us is not with us running the show he is still with us uh, in support and in in our hearts uh he's not dead he's just not working yeah, <laughs> i was gonna say i'm like kyle's fine guys Everybody, yeah kyle's, kyle's fine. Yeah. Yeah, kyle's okay, okay. Uh, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And for kyle yeah. <laughs> um a huge huge thank you to our dungeon master monty martin uh for running this great campaign and, and creating for- such evil <laughs> what evil is this <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, and as, as always, uh, thank you to our awesome, amazing sponsors uh, at uh, uh, um, Brothers Forge. They're running their Kickstarter right now. There's less. There's like a week left or so in it. Uh, you can get this awesome initiative tracker that I've been using in the games. Uh, they fully magne- magnetized. They sent us one as a prototype. It's super amazing. Um, it's definitely a premium uh, accessory for your game table, but I certainly love it and think it's worth every penny. So check them out. Brothers Forge Kickstarter campaign right now for the legendary Rod of Initiative. A huge shout out to them for sending this along and sponsoring this episode. Of course, don't forget to take a look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can find all of your favorite classic dungeon dude shirts like Troll Killer and Yes, Yes, Yes. And of course, some of the new ones from Shadows of Draconheim as well. Check out bit.ly slash dungeon dudes merch. Uh, If you're enjoying our stream and want to support our work, check us out on Patreon. You can find out how by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. And of course, please, if you are joining the Patreon, check out our phenomenal Discord community. It is the most fun you can have with $1 a month. (laughs) Um, yeah so for a dollar a month you can join our patreon and you can join us on discord chat with us about all of the fun cool drakenheim stuff chat with us about your favorite nerdy things we have tons of channels in there to talk about anything you really want and it's a great place to come and hang out with all of us Uh, we all pop in there from time to time and uh, answer questions and uh, just the community itself i think answers a lot of questions and it's a really supportive and wonderful place and it's always a blast to, to be part of it. So check us out. 
Yeah, in fact, the coolest thing about our Patreon community is way back when I asked for our patrons to give us ideas and names of locations in the city of Drakenheim. And this, the Black Ivory Inn, was one that was submitted by one of our patrons. Multiracial Lion is the, is the hey. username they go by. Hey. So uh, th- thank you to them for sending the, this amazing location out uh, to us uh, and uh, letting that be the seed of this awesome adventure there tonight. So that's a, a cool shout out that, uh, you know, they're, they're in our behind the scenes discussions and everything everything like that um and more so the episode that we have coming this week on our youtube channel youtube.com slash dungeon dudes was inspired by a patron's question so if you enjoy the show you want to contribute to our work in multiple ways um please jo- join us there because we the, it's a really special community and our patrons really get to feel like they're the, our patrons are a part of the dungeon dudes team and a huge thank you to them for supporting us and making sure that the and making sure this work is possible in in that way so a big thank Thank you uh, uh, to the uh, to our patrons for being so creative and, and generous with uh, both supporting us and with ideas and chatting with us. I think uh, that is uh, that is all. Again, check us out on YouTube uh, um, for our latest new episode coming on this Thursday, uh, where we're going to be talking about what are we talking about on YouTube on Thursday? Kevin? Uh, how to quickly. Or how, um... Quick tips for homebrewing battle-ready NPCs. Oh, yeah. This is a fun one. So, yeah, it's super cool. We're talking about building NPCs, how you actually stat them out really, really fast without making a ton of extra work for yourself as a dungeon master. This method is so fast that basically I don't do any prep work with my NPCs anymore. (laughs) It's really effective. So we're sharing that this week. So check that out at youtube.com slash dungeon dudes. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time in Drakenheim.